I've got the uh, head right here and put it in my little jig. Again, this is a, a, tie, a fly tying ki uh, jig that I'm using to uh, put this in. And I put a putty on uh, the uh, clamps to give me some purchase when I uh, mount it in there and so it won't move on me. All right. Okay, the head measurement's spot on, so I don't know what I'm going to do to improve that. Maybe it's just the fact that he's not finished yet, and uh, I need to finish his head before I can make a judgment. I think where I'm going to take down is on the sides of this head. I've got a bit of a skin rash going on in my hand and I'm not sure what it is but uh, it might be due to my diabetes and uh, it's irritating and uh, it doesn't hurt or anything it's just irritating you learn to put up a lot of stuff as you're growing older and you start getting things that uh, come with age. Of course, diabetes comes at any age. I gotta figure out what the heck I'm gonna put on his head too. If I put anything on his head.
Okay, this side of the face is a little thicker <coughs> than the other side, so I'm going to have to take it down a little. Slant of the jaw is a little lower here than it is over there. So, and I liked the slant better there than I do here. So I'm going to take it down just a little. And I took it too much. Doing phases is a constant adjusting because you're making a face that has to look similar to the other side of the face. It has to be symmetrical. Although it can't be completely symmetrical because nobody's face is completely symmetrical. I see what I got to do there. It's a little bit lower on the cheek. It's constantly adjusting and constant, constantly evaluating what you've done. And uh, that's what sculpting is, is just constantly judging what you just did. Maybe that's why artists go crazy. <laughs> because they're constantly uh, evaluating what they're doing. Ain't always favorable. I'm not giving away any great secrets here if I share this with YouTube. And I decided to go ahead and do that so that you see what kind of evaluation I put into everything I do and the thought process. That's part of the sculpting is a, as a, is a thought process the artist has as he's creating something that will last for thousands of years. And quite literally, a bronze will last for thousands of years. Long after an oil painting has turned to dust, bronzes will still be around. against oil paintings. I wish I could do them because it'd be a lot easier than doing this. Well, actually, no, it wouldn't be easier. It is a very complicated art form, too. And there's a lot of evaluation that's going on in that, too. Constantly evaluating colors and All the stuff that goes into a painting.
So as you can see, the face is starting to uh, take shape. You don't want to over exaggerate the face. But everything is just, in this size, everything is just moving little molecules of clay constantly filling little holes and taking down little mold, uh, mounds of clay that uh, aren't supposed to be there and, and eventually you shape it to look something familiar like a face. If you notice I haven't put the eyeballs in yet that's because I'm just getting the eyeball sockets ready for the eyeballs. Okay. I'm going to do the bottom lip first. don't want it too thick on one side and too thin on the other so you want to kind of even it out the best you can and let's just put it right on top of the bottom lip for the heater it's making so much noise in the background but that's how I can sculpt without freezing having heat The thing about the mouth and the shape of the mouth is that the corners of the mouth come out as a triangle from the outside edge of the nostrils, which are not there. So I'm just imagining what the nostrils are going to look like when they're on there. And uh, you don't want to make the mouth too wide, although there were people who have really wide mouths, but you can't sell something that is odd and there are people with odd shaped faces and that's just the way nature is not everybody's alike fortunately same how dull would this earth be just little tiny strokes nothing sweeping
this is where these little tiny with the wire loops from uh, Sculpture Depot, the uh, elliptic tools come in extremely handy because you've got to shape the nostrils and the best way to do that is with a wire tool. Ball tools are good, but you still need a wire tool to get down in there in the crevices. You use a ball tool, it tends to round out the crevice too much. And it doesn't look natural. Small, very light strokes. No heavy hand on this. Okay, I'm noticing that this cheek is a little rounder and a little higher than that cheek. So I need to take down this cheek a little bit because I like the other cheek better. I think that's where I'm going to call it quits for today. I'm going to let myself live with this face for a couple of days and come back to it on Monday. And uh, hopefully it will look better. I'm going to leave the uh, thing for his head because I am going to redo his head. You know, I still work on his head. But his head is proportional to his body and that's and he wasn't that much taller than she was but in reality her head will be smaller than his and that head is right on the button as far as uh, proportion but everything else is right on the button length of his legs two heads so that's going to be it for today and uh pick this up on Monday. I'm happy. All right, good night, everybody, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Or Monday. <laughs> Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday. Good night. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right. See you next time.